Hi, my name is Dr. English, and in this tutorial we are going to be talking about the Bohr model and electron configurations. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what is an electron configuration, drawing Bohr models, determining the maximum number of electrons per shell, and then doing some practice at the end. So first things first, what is an electron configuration? You can think of an electron configuration as being the organization of electrons in each shell. That's what we're looking at. How are the electrons organized within a shell? The ground state electron configuration is written below the atomic number on the periodic table portion of your reference table. So where it says electron configuration, there it is. That 2-4 that you see right here, that's the electron configuration for carbon. Now remember, Every element that's listed on your periodic table is an atom. And therefore, if it's an atom, a protons will equal electrons. So if my atomic number is 6, that means in this particular example, I have protons equaling 6. And if I add together 2 and 4, I get 6. Therefore, the number of electrons total will be 6. The electron configuration 2-4 means that the carbon atom has two electrons in the first shell and four electrons in the second shell. How many electrons do we have per shell? Well, to figure that out, we're going to use this formula right here, 2n squared. So each shell or principal energy level going 1 through 7 can hold a maximum number of electrons that are equal to this 2n squared formula. So in shell number one, or principal energy level number one, we'll have one squared times two. So in the first shell, there's two electrons maximum. In shell number two, or in principal energy level number two, we put the two in for the end. So two squared is four times two is eight. If we go to shell three, we'll put in the three here. So three squared is nine times two is 18. Shell four, we'll put the four in here. So four squared is 16 times two is 32. And finally, shell five, five squared is 25 times two is 50. Now one thing that you need to realize, once you reach period four, do not try to compare the number of electrons in each period with the maximum number of electrons per shell. We get into this concept called overlap, which if you take honors chemistry or AP chemistry, your teacher will address at that point. And that deals primarily with the behavior of electrons with transition metals. The next thing that we have to look at is how to draw Bohr models. So the example that we're going to use is the carbon atom. Now, if you recall in a carbon atom, the number of protons is six because it has an atomic number of six. Therefore, in the nucleus, six protons. The number of neutrons is six, because we know that the atomic mass of carbon is 12. So there is our six neutrons inside the nucleus. Six plus six gives me 12 atomic mass. The last thing that we have to look at is the number of electrons. And since we are dealing with an atom, and protons will equal electrons, and we have six protons, that means we're going to have six electrons. The next question is, how are these electrons going to be distributed out in this Bohr model. Well, remember, in shell one, one, we're looking at the number of maximum electrons. So one squared is one times two. I can have two electrons in that first shell. Therefore, in this very first shell, we're gonna say shell number one, we're gonna have two electrons. Now, the maximum number of electrons I have to deal with is six. So if I have two electrons in the first shell, that means I have four electrons left to arrange around this nucleus. So let's look at the second shell. What's the maximum number of electrons that we can hold in the second shell? Well, if I put the two in there for shell number two, I find that the maximum number is eight. That's more than enough room to accommodate my last four electrons. So there'll be four electrons in this outermost shell of shell number two. The last thing that you should be aware of in terms of doing these electron configurations and looking at your periodic table is that for very large atoms, the electron configurations on your region's reference table for your periodic table are going to start with dash 18 dash 32. 
This basically means there wasn't enough room in the box to cram in the entire electron configuration, so they cut off the beginning part of the 2-8. So for example, with AU, if you look at the electron configuration, there we see that dash 18, then 32, 18, and 1. So that's the truncated electron configuration. If we were to write out the whole thing, it would look like this. That would be the whole thing, but yet again, this portion has been taken out. Now it's time for some practice. So I'd like you to stop what you're doing, do the four practice problems, and then come back afterwards and check your answers. Welcome back. Let's look at the first one here, helium. So we're gonna put down the number of protons and neutrons and electrons when drawing this Bohr model. So if I think of helium, helium has two protons, it has an atomic mass of four, so two neutrons, so that is my nucleus, and I'm not so talented to think that I can draw perfect circles around my nucleus, nor am I remotely drawing these to scale, but I'm just trying to get my point across. So two protons, two neutrons in my nucleus, therefore, and then my electron configuration, if I look it up on my region's reference table, is just a two. So that means in the first shell, I have two electrons. And this is basically my small version of how to draw a Bohr model two protons, two neutrons, two electrons in the first shell. Let's look at oxygen. Oxygen has an electron configuration of 2-6. So for the Bohr model of this, I know that in oxygen, because the atomic number is eight, there'll be eight protons. I know that the atomic mass for oxygen is 16, therefore there'll be eight neutrons. So there's my nucleus. Now I have to draw my electrons around my nucleus here. So in my first shell, I'll put a one down here representing that this is my first shell, I'll have two electrons. And then in my second shell, where I could have a maximum of eight, but I only need six electrons represented here, I'll put six electrons. And that is in the second shell. So again, I can double check myself to make sure that this is an atom if the number of protons, eight protons right here, adds up to the number of electrons right here. Two plus six gives me eight electrons. I have my Bohr model written correctly. Now let's look at sodium. Sodium has an electron configuration of two, eight, one. Therefore, based off of that, and looking at my periodic table, I know that the number of protons are 11, so 11 protons, and the number of neutrons, since the atomic mass is 23, is 12, 12 neutrons. And so that represents my nucleus. So in the first shell, I'm gonna have two electrons. In the second shell, I'm going to have eight electrons. And in that last shell, I'm going to have one electron. So in this sodium atom, three shells are occupied. First shell having two electrons, the second shell maxing out at eight electrons, and then for that last electron right here, that is in the third shell. The last example is bromine. So if I look at my example of bromine, I know bromine has an atomic number of 35 protons, and based off of its atomic mass, I know that the number of neutrons will be 45. 45 neutrons, and there's my nucleus. And then for my electron configuration, if I look that up, that is actually 2, 8, 18, 7. So that means in my first shell, I'm gonna have two electrons. In my second shell, I'm going to have eight electrons. In my third shell, I'm going to have 18 electrons, which maxes out that third shell. And then for the final shell, I'm going to have seven electrons. So that's one, two, three shells filled, and that last shell has seven electrons. And that represents the Bohr model for bromine. So what did you learn? Well, we went over what is an electron configuration and how it organizes electrons. We talked about drawing Bohr models. We looked at determining the maximum number of electrons per shell. And finally, we did a little bit of practice. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.